Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today for another video. It is Sunday, so y'all already know it is mimosas and makeup, and I've got a mimosa right here. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for today's video. I recently watched a video by Heather Austin. If you don't know who she is, her information will be linked in the description box. And she did a video about 10 releases that she did not purchase. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, yes, I wanna do that. So that's what I'm gonna share today with you all because y'all know I do have a lot, but there are some things that I did not purchase. So if you wanna see what I didn't purchase in 2021, keep watching this video, let me know what you think, what releases did you skip out on, and do you have any of the ones that I'm gonna share with you? Let me know in the comments. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, and you're just trying to make some better decisions for 2022 and you wanna connect with another makeup enthusiast that's doing the same thing, definitely consider joining the community because I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. Yeah, so as soon as I saw Heather's video, I was like, I have to do this because we have no problem showing all the things that we buy on Instagram and obviously here on YouTube and we're so excited, but do we like pump ourselves up for the things that we skip? Are we giving ourselves kudos? Are we tooting our own horn? Cause if we don't toot our own horn, then who else will? I mean, I'm proud and you should be too if you didn't get everything because we want it all and it's all ours unless we in the words of glam girl chelsea decide to leave it at the store or leave it online so i'm gonna share the stuff i left i left it at the store all right so here we go i was about to show you the items but i'm gonna pop a picture up because i don't have them loser okay i have the the list in my phone though so that is what i'm grabbing what a mess i was literally about to i was literally about to grab some palettes that aren't sitting right there. Palette number one. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit so I can pop the picture up in all this glory. Cause I'm gonna, in the words of makeup craze, admire from afar. Okay, Bad Witch Club by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. There it is. Now, y'all know my, my, my relationship with Give Me Glow. Beautiful shimmers, beautiful color stories. The mattes, they're a little rough. They're a little scratchy, you know? When I started using my Give Me Glow eyeshadow palettes, I'm not sure if it was the brushes or what, but a few months back when I pulled out the Vivid Rose palette, the look I came up with was gorgeous. So there is no way I am decluttering my Give Me Glow palette. Let's just admire and honor the Bad Witch Club palette. Mm. So this palette came out, I don't know when it came out. I don't know if it was holiday or Halloween. I think it was holiday though. No, it says fall. This palette is beautiful though. You see, you got that little, that little very peri shade, which is very appropriate for 2022. You got that, you've got these vibrant purples. You've got these beautiful greens and blues and that, that melony pink up in the corner. This is a really beautiful color story. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't watched any reviews or seen anyone use it in person, but I'm assuming that these pan size sizes are the same sizes as their normal pants, which is called huge. I mean, when I buy eyeshadow, I, I'm not trying to get through it, but um, these pants are really, really big. 37 millimeter pants, yep. So this is season one, so I'm assuming there is going to be a season two. So I am really excited. Oh, it does say stay tuned for season two. But yeah, this is just gorgeous. I don't know what else to say. I skipped it. I was just kind of like, you know, my experience with Give Me Glow isn't always the best, but I am a fan of their color stories. And I think when you learn how to use their mattes and shimmers in a way that works, the eyeshadow looks are gonna be amazing. Here comes a kid, here he comes. Hello, are you coming in to brush your teeth? Whoa, whoa. Don't show the viewers what? He just had some more of that cheesy chicken. I'm not saying that I'll never get this palette. I was thinking just now mm, with these cool tones, reminding me a bit of Quintessence by Sydney Grayson Temptalia. I do not have that nearby, but 
I mm, think I can probably pull a similar look from those Temptalion palettes, combining them. But this is gorgeous. Hello. Go ahead and say hi. Hello. They can't see you. Hello. Okay. I don't know why you needed to sound like that. Here, here, come on, August, take the toothpaste. I'm tired. I'm tired, dude. <laughs> Nobody worries if I'm tired, though. Here. Okay, y'all, enough of that. Let's move on to item number two. Item number two that I passed on was the Primrose palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This wasn't a hard one for me to pass up, but when I watch my favorite YouTubers review certain things, it's like, wow, they really made that palette look amazing. I watched Patty Alonzo in particular. She's the one I watched where I was just like, damn, do I want this? Like, I kind of want this. I did hear that these shades were very powdery, but I really enjoyed this color story. And I've mentioned before that I have started to become a fan of multiple use palettes. So those two blushes on there, especially that terracotta one, I really like that shade. And I just thought this would be a nice everyday palette, but I say that like I have an everyday palette. I have so many palettes, there is no everyday palette for me because I'm always trying to use a different one. So saying that is kind of null and void for me. It could be someone else's everyday palette though, for sure. I did see this in person in Sephora and the color that really stood out to me that I liked was that fire opal shade, that coppery tone, but we all know. Um, I think your headphones are in the cabinet. Did you smell your breath to make sure it smells minty fresh? Okay, can you close the door all the way? This was cute and it did go on sale and I still skipped it because I, I, first of all, $55, no ma'am, no. Now, when it went on sale for like 36, I was kind of like, ooh, but I just never, I just never pushed the button on it. The palette that I'm thinking about purchasing, you guys, is the Muse palette by Vive. I really want to try this brand and I feel like this has that same vibe and I've heard some really good things about this brand. So that's the palette that I'm thinking about purchasing instead of Primrose. But I skipped on Primrose. Pat yourself on the back y'all. Whatever y'all skipped on, if it was Primrose or something else, pat yourself on the back. I'm gonna get his headphones and then we're gonna move to number three. I told this kid to look in the cabinet next to the dining room table. I go out there and he has a chair at the pantry. Now why would there be head? I'm moving on to number four before he come back in here for something else. So yeah, Aviv is on the list, Primrose is out. I had those Charlotte Tilbury cream mats on my list of things to try. Really wanted to try the black one and the smoky taupe. And they're a smoky nope. I feel like people are having a hard time with them and I'm wondering if they compare to those ColourPop cream eyeshadows that I have. I think that people were expecting them to be soft and creamy and those ColourPop cream eyeshadows are very stiff very good base they are not going to move and i think that people had trouble blending them out now i watched patty alonzo surprise surprise and then she did a look where she took that black one and put the regency blue from bridgerton over top completely changed it you know with the black base and that's why i wanted that black one for a base for my duochromes and multi-chromes, but it might be a note. My friend Liz told me that those Vive sticks are really nice, so we'll see. Anyway, that's neither here nor there because this is, this is not about what we're buying. This is about what we didn't buy. So let's get back to that and let's move on to number three. Number three is the Amunet New Palette by Adept Cosmetics. Now Adept, right when this palette was starting to go up, Adept kind of found themselves in some hot water. You know, this palette had gone on sale prior to that and I did not grab it. Now this palette had like a light and a deep. There was one palette that came with a blue matte and the other, that's kind of wild though. Because that Seth shade, like the one that is different in the two palettes, one is like, a light ghost shade and then the other one is like a matte blue i don't even make that make sense make that make sense i could see if it was like 
a light ghost shade and then like a mm, transitional brown shade, but not a light ghost shade and then a navy blue. I can't. Let me move on because I see I get off I get off task. I did not get this palette. <sighs> I don't know why. It is very very beautiful. It it really is actually, but I just didn't do it probably because. The whole pre-order thing is just driving me crazy. Like it drives me nuts. I am not gonna make a habit of that this year. I'm not saying I'm not doing any because I think I am going to get the Glaminatrix palettes that are coming. I wanna see the neutral one, but they both look very special. And I'm thinking about those, but I'm not making a habit of the pre-order situation. And I think by the time that palette was coming out, I was just over it. I was just like, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not waiting. Cause even now you can order it and it's going to ship in late February. Gorgeous palette. Swatches are beautiful. Everyone that I've seen use this palette has made some beautiful, beautiful looks, but I passed on it. It was $56 and I just said no. So let's move on to number four. And we're talking about Glaminatrix. So this is perfect. Let me pull it up. I passed on the Silent Night palette. <sighs> this was pretty too, but something about this color story just was not doing it for me. I don't know if it was because of those two orange shades. I don't know what it was. When I think of my ultimate Christmas palette, there are two. There is the Christmas morning palette by surprise, surprise, give me glow. And then there's the, I think it's bronze temptation. It is a six pan palette by Pat McGrath that has been discontinued. Both of those palettes are very similar and um, they're gorgeous. So the Silent Night palette, just something about it just didn't do it for me. And I'm all about creative color stories, but when I was trying to think about what I would do with this, I just kind of, in my mind, wasn't liking the looks that I created <laughs> in a way. I just wasn't, I was like, mm, I don't think so. I really thought that this palette was going to sell out. At this time, I think you could also purchase the mini Sandra Rose palette, so let's put those both as number four because I didn't get that one either. There was something with that color story as well. For some reason, I just wasn't into it. And then when the, neither one of them sold out as fast as I thought, I just was so tempted. Like I was about to push the button on them. And then I was just like, oh, I, I don't think I'm gonna do this. Then when I thought about the shipping and everything, I was just like, I don't want this that bad. So I skipped it. It's beautiful. I have seen beautiful looks with it, but honestly, I don't have any regrets about not getting this one and I feel proud about that. So I just thought it'd be great to share that. Let me know if y'all got this one because it is pretty. So number five, I passed on the Happy Hour Collection by Glam Light Cosmetics. And one thing that I love is a good drink and a good happy hour. And I was like, this idea is so cute. Packaging, once again, swung a little too much, but I skipped this one. I don't know how I did that, but I did, and I'm proud. Now, you may remember that I do own the chocolate martini palette. And this was some friend mail from my friend Vanna's grand. She ended up with two and I'm so glad to own this palette. This is such a gorgeous palette. It's neutral, but even if you take this purple out, to me, it's still a bit special. I have always enjoyed the quality of glam light it's just great you know i've always said people get more so thrown off by the obnoxious packaging i did throw away that plastic bottle that it came with i threw that away but then what happened was black friday came i believe and then everything went to 40 percent off and i was so tempted so tempted to get that and i didn't i well i wanted to get the um the green one the dirty martini and i kept saying nope you are not going to get that palette because that palette reminds you a lot of avocado toast by bh cosmetics and i was like if you get that then like avocado toast has to go so if i eventually get dirty martini 
I'm gonna have to let avocado toast go because the color stories are so similar. I am just not gonna have two palettes that are that similar in my collection. One of them is not gonna get used. And most likely it would probably be the BH one because I love that glam light formula so much. It went on sale again recently too. It had it in my cart and I was just like, no, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not. So I did pass on that for now. Will I possibly get it in the future? It's definitely possible, but you know, as time goes on, sometimes the hype of, well, most times, the hype of these releases and collections dies for me. But if it doesn't, then that will let me know like, hey, this is something that you've really been thinking about and nobody's talking about it anymore. Yeah, y'all, no happy hour collection for me. So number five, and I'm still a bit surprised at myself about this, and I'm not saying that it's a done deal, but it is the Poison Ivy Palette by Milan Row Makeup. Now, had never heard of Milan Row, but the reason that I did is because this palette was designed by Doodles by the Bunny. And I have been following her for some time now. I started my makeup page at the end of 2019. So probably sometime in 2020, I found her and I absolutely love her vision and color stories for palettes. Like more people need to get with her because she could probably save some brands. Urban Decay. Anyway, because that Sims collection, she revamped that, thankfully. Anyway, let me, let me move on. So her palette was the Poison Ivy palette and it's beautiful. It's got a lot of greens, a whole lot of greens actually. And then you have like a very deep, I don't know if that's a, it's like a deep, probably a blue maybe, or maybe it's a black, I'm not sure. And there's a red and there's kind of a taupe color. I'm wondering, does this give me Dirty Martini and Avocado Toast vibes as well? So at the time I'm thinking about all these green palettes and I was just like, I cannot, I felt bad about that. It's $39. I don't even think I've watched a review on it to know about the quality, but the palette looks gorgeous. It really does, but I skipped it. I expect more coming from Doodles by the Bunny though. I really do because she is something special. And if you don't follow her on Instagram, you are missing out on some serious inspo. But yeah, I'll link her on uh, Instagram in the description box. This is a beautiful palette. I just think the color story was similar, as I said, to Dirty Martini, which, you know, you know, I have these pretend carts. So it's like, oh, I got a cart with here, here, I can't get on. Then I ended up getting nothing. And that's what happened with this one. Number six is by a brand called Martine Cosmetics. And this is the 669 Eyeshadow Palette. This palette, I just thought was very interesting, very different color story. It's deep, dark, and grungy. I think it had one duochrome, one or two duochrome shades, and it was just very eerie. Why didn't I get this palette? Well, I'm all about instant gratification these days. I knew it was gonna take a long time, and I was just kinda like, ugh, I don't feel like waiting on this. I wasn't sure what 669 meant, so I was just kinda like, mm, cause I was thinking it was, <laughs> I was singing that song, you know the song, um, what's the song by the Yin Yang Twins? Maybe like, Three, six, nine, <laughs> fine. Let me take it to you one more time, get low. But I was saying six, six, nine, and Ash was like, no, Carrie, it's three, six, nine. And I was just like, well, what's six, six, nine? So then I was like, I can't, I can't do that because I just don't know what that means. Did I see a review on this? I waited for Nikki Raven to do her review. She was really waiting for her palette to come. And I think I eventually watched it. I saw some reviews. I think they were all in French. I just wasn't afterwards like, wow, like, ooh, I really need to get this now. And then once the hype of it for me died down, I just forgot about it. So... I didn't get this one, but it's definitely like a real cool, grungy color story. You know what I mean? Ooh, but it's kind of reminding me and giving me, maybe not with that blue, but I was thinking the Nomad Berlin palette vibes maybe. And then I had the Nomad Haunted Europe palette that kind of has, you know, some similar shades and grunge. So I just didn't need it. It definitely would have added something special as far as the brand and the aesthetic of the palette, it would have added that to my collection, 
but I just mentioned those two nomad color stories. So it's not something I really needed. And I don't ever look back at this one and say, man, I should have got that one. Like, I don't feel like that. And I'm happy about it. So pat on the back for that. Palette number eight goes to the Surge palette by Blend Bunnies Cosmetics. Ooh, my dollhouse should be here today. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is that just made me say no to this one. It just didn't speak to me at all. And I know many people love this palette. Like they really do. The neon shades, I don't know if I would really use them. I might use them for an inner corner highlight or maybe to blend out some of the other mattes, but this one, it just didn't call to me. I do like the deep mattes. I do like that there are shimmers in this one because I'd love to try a palette of hers with the shimmers, but it just wasn't gonna be this one. And every time I look at it, I'm like, I'm really glad I did not get this. I have the original blends palette, which has, I'm not saying all the same mattes, but it has a lot of similar mattes. I don't know, I feel like I'm good on that. And the dollhouse palette is nothing like the blends, but I feel like there are some similarities between the mattes in the original blends palette, as well as in the surge palette. And that was another reason that I said no, because I already have trouble using these big palettes in the first place. That's why I'm trying not to get too many. So I was like, I don't need to add another big palette with similar shades. And that's why I did not get the Surge palette. So I do feel good about that. And I think her pricing is great, like $43. The quality is, is very nice, which is why I got Dollhouse. But Dollhouse has a, a totally different vibe, totally different color story. So there's not gonna be any repetition, you know, with the blends palette and the dollhouse palette. So skip that too, y'all. Now palette number nine, I'm gonna tell y'all, I have pushed the button on this one or I've been about to push the button on this so many times. This is the Patrick Ta blush palette. I remember when I saw this blush palette and I was like, oh my God, that's mine. Like I am getting it, I'm getting it. It's happening for me. And then when VIB happened, it was sold out. It was sold out for the entire VIB sale. Then I had an opportunity to get it 15% off. This is definitely a beautiful blush palette. And I know many, many people, including myself, are very into his blush formula. But when I thought about it, it took me a whole year to use the first Patrick Ta blush that I had, which was that orange color one. And then through Sephora, I ended up ordering two more. It was like the brown blush color that looks like one of the colors in the blush palette. And then it was like this deep plummy one. I liked those two shades and my orange one better than these vibrant pinks. The first one is kind of like a bubblegum pink and I have a Fenty cream blush that's very close to that. And then the second one, even though it's not orange, it's, it's similar to the orange blush that I have by Patrick Ta. I watched Morgan Turner use it. It was very bright. And I have some other bright blushes, like my two blushes by Wayne Goss. So I just felt like this might go to waste. So I ended up just buying two more separate blushes that I haven't used yet. So maybe that's going to waste too. I don't know. But I will say I got those other ones for VIB and I wasn't gonna get this for the 20% off. So I skipped it. And I don't look back at this one and say, oh, I wish I would have gotten it. I do think the quality is great if it's the same as his other cream blushes, but it just wasn't for me and that's okay. So, you know, I don't need all three blushes in one place. I'm good with having the three separate ones. And um, I think it was a great release for him. But I skipped that, y'all. Mm -hmm. Sure did. So palette number 10 is the Natasha Denona Green Brown Palette. I think this is the second year now where I've seen that palette and did not get it. When she has her Black Friday sales, you know, I feel like it was almost like a buy one, get one really because she had the blue, purple and the green brown for like a great price. And then if you got this by itself, I think it was $145 versus $239. It, it's beautiful, but these big palettes I'm not using. I don't even use Metropolis. and. There are some of these shades very, very close to this in Metropolis. So I was just like, you cannot, you can't do this. 
but I was so close to doing it two years in a row now maybe one day I'll push the button on it but I'm just not compelled right now I have so much eyeshadow and yeah I'm way less compelled even more so now because I have sat and really come to terms with the extreme eyeshadow collection that I have so this would have just added to it now are these colors I would wear absolutely I could wear every single color here in this palette but again if this was going to be a palette that I was going to be using every single day I could get this hands down but there is no palette that I just pull out every single day so I just don't think it would get the use that you know it, it really deserves because it is it is very nice but i skipped that you guys. you guys so those were the 10 launches from 2021 that i passed on and now i'm going to talk about two honorable mentions now they're honorable mentions because they are items that i had but i sold one of them you're going to be like what the first one is the huda beauty python palette the reason that I sold that palette and as soon as I got it and took it out, I thought in my head, this looks just like Club Nebula, just like it. So most likely one of these palettes is not going to get use. And I didn't want it to be Club Nebula because I love that palette, but all of the colors, even though Club Nebula is a larger palette, I feel like all nine of those shades in the Huda Beauty Python palette could be found in the Club Nebula palette. So I put it right on Macari and I was able to get the exact amount of money that I spent on the palette. So there was just no loss there. And I was very, very happy about that. And I'm still happy that I caught that. I want to do a better job of taking eyeshadow palettes out and actually looking at them before I make new purchases because I just think it's important to know what's in your collection so that you're not having too many repeats because we, we, we are going to have a ton of repeats, but if I can see it ahead of time, hopefully I'll waste less money in the long run. Now the second one, y'all Danessa Myrick's Lightwork volume three. I had it. I did not feel compelled to use it. I watched reviews on it and then I sold it. The pressed glitter, it wasn't a bad pressed glitter. Well, it didn't look like it, but I was annoyed about that being in the palette. But I was thinking, how much would I use the cream, the cream shades, that was one. The middle row with the like kind of iridescent highlighters or shadow shades, I have probably 10 times over in my eyeshadow singles collection. The one color that I really, really, really wanted was that orange that orange dual chrome type shade i was like wow this looks so good i watched bad to the brow she did a look with it and i'm like wow but then she pulled out her danessa myrick's twin flames and she's like oh my gosh this shade i think it's forever she's like it is the exact same color of the one in the palette so i was like done done i'm selling it and i actually ended up selling it to someone who was trying to get it for someone for their birthday the palette had been sold out and i made my money back because i did get the palette for 20 percent off but i sold it for what the palette what it costs which i think was 125. so you know between that and i pay for shipping on makari I just broke even and it was great. Like I just felt so good about it. So what I did do instead with that money was, and I, I haven't even shared all of this yet, but I ended up buying a whole bunch of products from Danessa Byricks because I never tried anything by her before. I bought some color fixes. I bought some twin flames. Now I do have two of the twin flames from a trend mood box and I did not care for those that much. They were the iridescent ones. But the ones that are really opaque, I think those are beautiful. And I did get that orange shade. I got like three of them. I really liked the color fixes because I thought they would be great bases for eyeshadow looks, especially when I'm using my singles. I bought the Vision Flush, which I think can be used on the cheeks and the lips and maybe the eyes. I bought a highlighter, which I don't like at all actually and I bought a bronzer that I really don't like it hmm, for some reason I don't feel like it melts into my skin and it wasn't even dark enough I didn't like that but everything else I really liked and I just felt like those other things are gonna get more use than the light work palette I think with light work it's a great palette for those 
who want to try duochromes and multi-chromes in different formulas and you don't buy indie singles. But for someone like me, I don't need it all in one place because I have so much and I am really certain that I could have duped that palette maybe two to three times over. And on top of that, when I have a palette and I don't feel compelled to pull it out and use it, it's like, my, I, I wanna feel like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to pull this palette out. And I swear that palette sat for like two weeks before I decided to say, Kara, you haven't even touched it. You haven't even swatched it. Like, let it go. Yes, people are ranting and raving about it and everything, but that doesn't mean that you will. And you have this feeling, so just go with that. Like. This isn't for you, you know what I'm saying? So I passed on it and that's my second honorable mention. So yeah, y'all, just wanted to share those things with you all because I know you see my eyeshadow collection and I know I really do basically have everything. We don't need to have everything, but I do feel good that I can look back and say, you know, that I said no to these things. If it goes on sale, if something's 40% off, like the glam light, I can always circle back if I'm still thinking about it. And All right, you guys. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, let me know what have you passed on this year? Let me know in the comments or not this year. Well, last year. And what have you passed on this year? Because there, there's stuff coming out left and right. So let me know what you've passed on and what you're passing on. And um, that's it. Thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me on another edition of Mimosas and Makeup. I do hope this was therapy for you because it always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I'll see y'all really soon. Bye. Go block your ears.